Today, I'm gonna share with you the eight things you should never, ever, ever do to your jaw. One of the most so common ways men restrict blood flow to that area is by worse than that. It could lead to a point where your package will stop working and get smaller table. without see. even him realizing it. The first man is reducing his testosterone, is reducing his sperm count, and reducing the size of his pee-pee into really? your private area, which expands the blood vessels, which consequently makes your package larger. So if you I don't use it, then prepare to lose Whatever. it. There are three more things you should never do to your groin area. And I would say number eight is probably the most traumatic one where you could eventually lose your manhood. Hey guys, it's Hink here. And like, guys, I try, I, I am an old miser yelling at the clouds, but I try to keep an open mind and I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. But Jesus Christ, some of these YouTube idiots just make me want to pull my hair out. And this video we're going to review in particular really led me down a range of emotions, which we'll talk about today. But, you know, Kelly does amazing work, guys. He sent me this video on teaching men's fashion and he thought that, you know, I should review it. So, guys, if you like this video, please go down to the link of the description. Find the link where you can buy Callie a coffee and please support Callie because he really does great work and is a major contributor to this channel. All right, guys, so this video is about teaching men's fashion and it's about like basically never do these things to your penis. And so I was like, okay, penis health, all right, maybe he'll give some good advice. I've already been hurt before with guys like Alpha Him, Alpha M, okay? Starting with number one, should never restrict blood flow. All right, so what is his first advice is basically never wear things that are going to constrict blood flow around your penis. And so I was like, I was so surprised. I was like, oh my God, like, Okay, like, okay, maybe he, maybe this is going to be a good video. Because I've made videos about, like, why you need to avoid constriction rings and wearing them for prolonged periods of time. And why, like, same thing, why I would always advise you never use, like, a sleeve for a prolonged period of time. That's just my opinion, guys. By wearing underwear that's too tight for them. And this can even end up making your thing a bit smaller. But then he starts talking about how your underwear might be too tight and how you need to, like, go up two sizes in your underwear. And I was just like... Jesus, man. Like, if anything, guys, just get, like, the pouchy underwear, okay? Am I actually wearing pouchy underwear today? I am, okay? I'm not sponsored by Saks, guys. But they actually have a little, like, pouch for your jimmy, okay? And your testicles so it doesn't get all compressed. But personally, I don't think that matters, okay? I don't think wearing tight boxer briefs is going to make that much of a difference long term, okay? You know, I don't recommend you wear boxer briefs, but you don't have to double up the size of your underwear. And if you want to take this even further and fully increase blood flow, you can use something like a penis pump. And then, like, and then out of nowhere, like, I knew it was coming within 50 seconds, bathmate promo. I already wanted to start throwing the screen. I was just like, come, come on, man. And so he's talking about how, like, you know, using the bathmate can improve blood flow. And guys, like... Yes, I'm not gonna lie to you, using a pump can, but I've talked about it. Guys, how many videos have I made about like Bathmate before? It is a very poor design and it is actually a very dangerous design, especially the baseline model when you are literally like jamming this device into your actual neurovascular bundle right along the pubic symphysis at the top of your penis. If you saw me trying to make a video about, oh, these things are good for penile health, that's a terrible like first thing, okay? And it's also very deceptive. He says that this is FDA regulated. And on the screen, it says like FDA approved. Guys, FDA approved and regulated are very different things. In order to have an FDA regulated device, you just pay money and then register with the FDA. That's all it means. It doesn't mention anything about safety or efficacy or anything like that. So it's very deceptive. Number two, you should never brush your teeth incorrectly. Number two is brushing teeth. And I was like, okay, where's he going with this? And he talks about actually the link between like periodontal disease and erectile dysfunction. And you know, there actually is pretty decent metrics with looking at periodontal disease and the risk of cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction. You know, he was giving good advice, brush your teeth, but then he starts talking about how you need to use basically an antibiotic mouthwash. And here's where we disagree. And here's where I think it's bad information. There have been studies that have shown that if you use antibiotic mouthwashes, it can actually kill the bacteria that helps with basically the nitrite production, which production of nitric oxide, which is responsible for erection quality. So there have actually been studies showing that use of mouthwash is, is correlated with poor erection quality, especially for those that have 
poor amounts of basically citrulline in your body. Guys, you like you actually want to be careful with using too much mouthwash. Now, if you are taking a high quality citrulline supplement like Vigor, which I designed to maximize nitric oxide, healthy blood flow to your penis, then quite honestly, it doesn't matter if you use a mouthwash or not because you already have a nice enough nitric oxide production in your body. But honestly, same thing, guys, if you have like a very good diet with like leafy green vegetables or you have a diet high in beets or other like nitrites, okay? That's mostly in guys that are on the verge of a nitric oxide deficiency. But still, that's misleading information when he says use a mouthwash when that mouthwash could actually damage your penile health. The reason is that when your laptop sits on your lap, it indirectly increases the heat in your groin area, which has been found to decrease the production of sperm and increase the possibility of having erectile dysfunction. So here he talks about working on with a laptop on your lap. And you know, guys, I made a whole video about like testosterone, how to maximize it, what supplements work. But I also talked in that video how there's clear evidence that actually even cell phone use, keeping your cell phone near your, your genitals can actually decrease sperm quality and decrease testosterone. And I'll link some of the studies here in both humans and in rats. This is actually pretty good advice as far as you don't want to have a laptop on your lap or your cell phone on your lap for that matter. Never ignore the warning signs. Here he talks about like never ignore the warning signs. In my opinion, one of the most important warning signs is loss of nocturnal erections. I made a whole video about the importance of nocturnal erections. You guys should really watch that video after this one. But he starts talking about like if your Jimmy just stops working like all of a sudden, it's just like, whoop, I just have erectile dysfunction. And then his solution for that is to get a bath mate. Like what kind of dog? That, that that made me so mad because number one, first of all, I already talked about how dangerous the bathmate device can be. And even the fact that you're like jamming that water out, guys, water doesn't compress. So as soon as you jam that water out, you're going to have an immediate change of pressure. And there have been guys that I have coached on my patreon.com slash doc if you need to reach me that literally compress that thing into their jimmy and then feel a pop and have permanent damage because they just didn't know any better and because that bath made product is dangerous guys especially the traditional one that you just like press into your pelvis he's saying if you have erectile dysfunction use a device that might make your erectile dysfunction worse how is that good advice if you have erectile dysfunction all of a sudden you need to stop everything and figure out what caused it is it your diet is it your lifestyle is it your medications is it your poor sleep is it your hormones you need to figure out what it's causing it is it your pelvic floor health this is by far the the worst take of the entire video. Any shred of respect I had for him just went completely out the window. Use your phone for this amount of time. And guys, here he talks about cell phone use. I already talked about that. You know, this is actually a slightly redeeming point in the sense that you need to be careful with how you use your cell phone. Your cell phone does give off small amounts of radiation. Now, in theory, this is not what we call ionizing radiation, a radiation that's basically strong enough to knock an electron out of orbit and actually cause a free radical that can therefore lead to DNA damage for those looking for the actual pathos fizz behind it. But I digress. You want to keep it either in your back pocket or away, just as far away from your genitals as possible, guys. Okay, the rest of your structures aren't necessarily as, as sensitive. You don't want to ever like fall asleep on your cell phone. Oh, no, I love you more. You know, none of that corny crap. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm being a hater, Hink you know, whatever, but you don't want to fall asleep like near it. You don't want to keep it near. You want to keep it away from your body as much as possible in general. And start sending pictures of his package to everyone. And under no circumstance should you ever become this person. So number six, never send a picture of it. I mean, you know, that's pretty decent advice. Once again, I never, only a Sith deals in extremes, okay? You guys know I'm a nerd. But to say like never, so like if my significant other said like, hey, can you send me a D-pic? I would be like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like that would excite me. And, you know, obviously we have that trust. We have that relationship. He's primarily talking about unsolicited D pics. And you guys, like, please don't do a douchebag thing and like, oh, hey, you're on Tinder. I'm on Tinder. Here's my D. Like, don't do not do stuff like that, guys. But, you know, I'm not going to say never do it. And especially guys like, I mean, the one thing that he does say that I can't disagree with is like PE is real. Like enlargement is real, guys. Now, you don't need a bath mate. You can get a pump for like a fraction of the price at peakmalephysique.com that actually has a gauge and a handle so you can actually pump safely. But it is real and it can make a lot of difference. And I'm not going to lie, my reluctance to actually send a D-pick has gone down now that I have the confidence of actually gaining size. Guys, if you want to learn how to gain size from me, I have my course available. I put on over an inch and a half in three years in length. 
and over an inch in girth in basically that same time span. So no, this isn't some like, oh, in three months you can put on 18 inches or any of that bull crap. You have to actually work for it, but it is actually backed by clinical science. And guys, I actually have my before and afters on Reddit where you can actually see and prove that I'm not BSing you unlike everybody else. Never stop using it. And so guys, his next point is basically if you don't use it, you lose it. Once again, this actually starts out as a pretty decent point. I have my own qualms with the no fat people. I, I do think it really doesn't matter. Do whatever you want to do as long as you're still getting nocturnal erections, okay? Or you're still getting erections at some point. You need to have healthy blood flow into your penis. That is a very important part of overall penile health and recovery. That's why I recommend things like taking a scoop of like vigor or citrulline before bed because you get that nitric oxide and it boosts nocturnal erections, which is going to help maximize penile health, penile size, and erection quality. But if you are no fapping, as long as you're getting nocturnal erections, you're fine. But guys, there's been studies shown that as men age, their penises shrink. The reason why their penises shrink is be partially due to decrease in testosterone levels for those that are natural and those decreased testosterone levels lead to decreased nocturnal erections and those decreased nocturnal erections lead to the actual penile atrophy because the tissue is not expanding so you do need to get blood flow into your penis on a regular basis it doesn't mean you have to fap or anything like that but you do need healthy blood flow to your penis never use the wrong temperature of water on it and guys this last one was just like laughable i mean his basically conclusion is never shower in hot water. And it's like, dude, like, like what, bro? Like, come on. Well, in this one study, it showed that it can affect sperm quality. I, you know, I have a whole video on the use of like heat, primarily when it's talking about like penile elongation and penile enlargement. But still, guys, heat can be a very good thing. Heat is going to help with blood flow. Heat is going to help with relaxation and actually stretching of the penis. Showering with a warm shower could be a very beneficial thing that is not going to be harmful. This one is actually totally crap. And, you know, once again, I made my video on heat. I talk about everything from saunas to actually using things like heat pads, guys. But you're not going to hurt yourself by taking a warm shower. Guys, there are several things that are like so much more important than basically everything that he mentioned on this list. So, for example, cardiovascular health doing cardio okay making sure your heart is in good health is going to help blood flow to your penis help with erection quality avoiding nicotine vasoconstrictive basically toxin that is going to lead to vasoconstriction in your penis and poor blood flow i have a whole video on like don't smoke don't vape using supplements like citrulline and e even if you're not going to use a supplement eating healthy with green leafy vegetables that are high in citrulline or even things like beets that have natural nitrates that can help with nitric oxide production being aware of nocturnal erections as i already mentioned and even something as simple as staying hydrated if you are dehydrated your body releases something that's called angiotensin angiotensin is a very potent vasoconstricting agent and so that's going to limit actually blood flow going to your penis and that can overall damage your penile health there's just so many things that he just kind of shit the bed on that would have been much more appropriate to include rather than like don't take warm showers there was parts of this video that were decent there were parts that were not overall i would give this advice maybe a solid like c plus i get what he's trying to do he gives many healthy recommendations in my opinion like despicable bathmate promo with like kind of lies and misinformation just to make a buck. I just, I have zero respect for that whatsoever, but at least some of the other points were reasonable. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please take a second just to give it a thumbs up before you leave. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Remember, there's nothing wrong with self-improvement, but you are enough just as you are. All right, guys, peace and love. Dr. Hink, got the plug on the health, yeah. Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah. In his office, no stealth.